This is NBC4's News Conference with Conan Nolan, Southern California's longest running public affairs program. We're going to learn who you are, learn what your needs are, and make sure we go to the most vulnerable first. On this edition of News Conference, nearly four years ago, Mayor it's Eric Garcetti right. announced sure that the homeless crisis had become an emergency. Now, despite tax hikes and bond issues, the crisis is getting worse. And the city has agreed to a court settlement that will keep tent encampments in place for years. Is this the new normal? What will it take for city officials to change their approach? Have they permanently lost credibility with the public? We Thank talk with so Mayor much. Eric Garcetti about that. The dramatic drop in ridership on Metro buses, the recent failure of his parcel tax to support Los Angeles Unified Schools, and criticism from the union representing the Department of Water and Power that his Green New Deal will drive up utility rates and increase chances of blackouts. And with all this, does he regret not running for president? Good morning and welcome to the Tom Brokaw News Center here at Universal City. I'm Conan Nolan. Hope you had a happy 4th of July. With us, the Honorable Eric Garcetti, the 42nd Mayor of the City of Los Angeles. And Mayor, hope you had a happy 4th as well. It was great. Thank you very much. Thank you for, uh, for taking the time. So, Always. lots to talk about. Let's start with the obvious. In 2015, there was a news conference on the south steps of City Hall. You announced a, a crisis, an emergency, yep. a homeless crisis. A hundred million dollars from the city treasury would go into solving this. Then later, there was an effort to to raise taxes. We agree to that again for homeless. Then there was a bond issue, a billion dollars, 1.2 billion. Despite all that, yeah. the problem's gotten a lot worse. And now we have garbage. Now we have rats. We have concerns about disease. Is this the new normal? No. And we can't accept it as. And those things don't all lead to each other. I think sometimes we're sloppy that it's just homelessness that's causing garbage when 80% of that comes from illegal dumping from businesses. But on homelessness itself, I have a great passion for this. A lot of people run away from this issue. Mayors don't have a lot of tools because the city doesn't control hospitals or addiction programs. We aren't responsible for the foster care system or jails or things that are releasing people into homelessness. But I don't want to be an Angelino who looks back on this decade of work and say, we stood by and did nothing. I want us to be able to work to reduce homelessness and save as many lives as possible on the streets of LA. So I've taken responsibility for responding to that. Since that press conference, you're right, we didn't just pass one, we passed two measures, one in the city and one in the county. Since then, I led a delegation to Sacramento because Sacramento was missing in action. Got Governor Brown and now Governor Newsom in the legislature to begin putting emergency monies into our homeless fight. And I've said, we have to treat this like we would an earthquake with a, an emergency attitude. The federal government still is missing in action, and I'm supporting Maxine Waters, uh, Ted Lieu, Senator Feinstein, who've all introduced legislation to put money nationally, because in the shadow of the White House there are tents, here in Los Angeles, where the increase was much less than other parts of this state because of these investments. And I'll tell you something that is succeeding, Conan. Four years ago, we were housing 9,000 people a year out of homelessness. Last year, it was nearly 22,000. If you told me that four years ago, I would say, runaway success, we're going to, in a few years, be done with homelessness on the streets. What we found out, though, is despite 22,000 lives being saved last year, even more people were pushed in. And until folks in Sacramento, Washington, start taking the supply of what's pushing people into homelessness seriously, mental health, uh, help with housing, all of those pieces, we will continue to be like the guys bailing out the ship, getting rid of the water. Maybe the water will reduce a little bit, but it's still a leaky boat until we get to the cause. And that's why I'm so passionate about treating this like the emergency it is. Right. But it's not a you can't buy your way out of this problem. You can't do it without resources. There is no question. I was this week out on the streets here in North Hollywood. A woman named Aida who had been hit by a bus, grew up in Echo Park. She's now a senior. She was just diagnosed with cancer. She's living on the streets, literally dying. We took her off the streets that day, helped get her to case management or putting her in a motel and hopefully to shelter and housing long term. You can't do that without money. A few years ago, we had 25 workers doing outreach for nearly 50,000 homeless people in the county of Los Angeles. It's an impossible caseload. Thanks to the voters, we now have about 800 people doing that outreach. I think it should be north of 1,000. But you absolutely, what somebody said, what's the plan? The plan is exactly that, to get to know each one of these people, help them off the streets. And if we've doubled the pace, we need to double it again. We should point out, though, that that person could say no. 
that person currently under state law is allowed to die on the street. Correct. And that happens a lot, particularly on Skid Row. So there's no effort. It, there doesn't seem to be any effort from your office or the city council to go to the legislature and say, we need to change, for example, the definition of gravely disabled. So a family can intercede on, on, on behalf of a family member who's mentally ill. We might consider changing the law with regard to uh, the Prop 47. You essentially, according to Absolutely. what we've seen, uh, decriminalize drug abuse. Yeah. You don't have any leverage over someone You're to get exactly them into right. court-ordered uh, drug rehab. Well, so I, can't, you know, must you not change statute? Absolutely, and I'd respectfully disagree. We actually did go to Sacramento. We did get them to pass legislation that lowers the bar a little bit for those folks who aren't about to harm you or harm themselves, but are clearly dying on the street, Conan. I don't understand why the law didn't let us intervene. That did pass. It'll come into effect. That allows us to have at least a little bit lower of a bar. Somebody walking around with just their underpants on and their feet cracking apart, they're clearly dying on the streets and we do need to be able to have that intervention, that ability to go in there and to help those that are most gravely ill. We also shouldn't think though that the entire homeless population is mostly those people. That's maybe five to ten percent of the people that are out there. About thirty percent say that they either have mental health issues or drug addiction. It's probably a little bit higher than that, but at least half of the people that are out there now are economically homeless. These are folks in their cars or on the streets couple things happen, they can't afford the rent, and now they're out there. So the combination of stopping this is going to be addressing mental health, and I'm glad you brought up Prop 47, because I have been one of the few people in the wilderness saying, well-intentioned, but bad execution. If you're going to let people out of the criminal justice system and you don't give a plan for them to get jobs, get into housing, if what drove them into jail and committing crimes was mental health and addiction, Two or three weeks later, they're addicted to drugs, living on the streets of L.A., feeding that habit maybe with petty crimes, and that is not serving anybody. You don't have a carrot and stick philosophy when it comes to the homeless. It's just a carrot. If you want, based on the Mitchell decision, we'll talk about in a few minutes, if you want to privatize public space with a tent, go ahead and do it. Arresting somebody for doing drugs or even selling drugs, the police officer, as a result of Mitchell, has to stay there after the arrest is made and wait for sanitation to come and, and write down all of their possessions, mm -hmm. which, by the way, uh, there's no limit to, so they can be placed in a bin and sent to a storage yard so that they get a receipt once they're out of prison or jail in a couple of days, okay. that we have in place um, done everything we possibly can to enable this population to stay there without right. seeking help on their own. I don't believe we've done anything to enable that, but we've had court decisions, you are correct, that really have been handcuffs. And I tried to change that dynamic. I've gone to the plaintiff lawyers that have usually sued and always won. So those who say, just fight harder, every judge, when given a choice between being quote-unquote humane or not, has for whatever reason said, we believe this to be hu more humane when you and I know keeping somebody on the street, cocooned from services, doesn't necessarily serve them. They might be dying on the street, might be uh, the victims of crime on the street, might be feeding their addiction on the street. So that has been the result of court decisions. I went to them and said, instead of fighting this out, why don't we sit down and ask them, how would you write these rules better? Because unless you think that people should have an unlimited amount of property and do anything on the street, I need your guidance so that you won't sue, but that we will begin to do that. And opening up our shelters, our bridge home shelters, has been very successful. We are now cleaning around those areas in those neighborhoods. We've seen tents come down about 50% wherever we open one up. We've seen crime come down about 60% wherever we open them up. There's four open. 21 more coming in this fiscal year in the next 12 months. So I'm optimistic this is the model that works. It helps us while we're handcuffed by these decisions, but we do need some assistance to be able to say at a certain point when there are beds available in a neighborhood and people refuse to get off the sidewalk, we need to be able to be able to enforce that. Talking to the mayor of Los Angeles, Eric Garcetti, lots of questions ahead when we return.